Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Ask IoT video series presented by IoT for All, the number one publication and resource for the Internet of Things. I'm your host, Ryan Chacon. On today's episode, we have John Eunice, the co-founder and COO of Litmus. They are a company that offers a flexible and scalable edge platform that provides critical data connectivity needed to monitor, visualize, analyze, and integrate industrial data at scale. Um, and like these other episodes, we try to focus on one single topic, and that topic today is what is the purpose of an edge data platform? platform for industrial IoT. So by the time you finish watching this, you will have an answer to that question and learn a bunch more about edge data platforms as they relate to not just the industrial space, but also IoT in general. So hope you enjoy this episode of the Ask IoT video series. Welcome, John. Thanks for taking time to chat with me today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so before we get into our conversation, I wanted to have you uh, do a quick introduction about yourself to our audience. Yeah, so my name is John Yunus. I'm one of the co-founders and COO of Litmus. I mainly oversee more of the go-to-market side of the business for Litmus, uh, and I'm based out of uh, our headquarters in San Jose. Fantastic. And for those of our audience uh, who may be a little bit unfamiliar with what the company does, what does Litmus do and the role, what role do you play in the space? Uh, yeah, so Litmus is an edge data platform for Industry 4.0. Um, so what that means is we provide a, a software platform where mainly manufacturing or industrial companies can connect to all their, their different equipment, no matter the maker model, we essentially have protocol drivers that can speak across any type of machinery, pull that data in, analyze it locally, and then provide them the ability to run their, their applications at the edge, deploy their, their intelligence at the edge, their machine learning models, um, and then data integrations to send this data out to anywhere where they want to leverage it. And then mm -hmm. a central management layer, which essentially helps them scale and, and manage all their edge deployments across multiple sites or multiple locations from one central interface. Fantastic. Um, so today's conversation is going to be around the purpose of edge, of an edge data platform for industrial IoT uh, industry 4.0, like, like you mentioned. Let me start off by asking you, what does the kind of current state of the industrial IoT market look like from your perspective? Um, and then what I want to get into is kind of the um, uh, the fit of, of why edge is something that's important. But let's start off just kind of at a high level, the overall state of the market from your perspective. Yeah, so it's still it's still the early days <laughs> for sure. Um, companies are are just getting started. Um, there there are definitely early adopters that that are already doing this at a, at a decent scale. We have customers that are, for example, deployed. Uh, across 45 factories, 40 factories. So we do have that kind of, of scale where they are leveraging this across their entire enterprise and they've developed multiple use cases on top of um, on top of our platform. But I would say that that's not the, the common scenario. Uh, definitely from year to year, we are seeing quite a lot of maturity in the market. Um, this year, I would say it's, it's starting to hit a, a peak in terms of the, the maturity. So companies are... They have an idea of what they that they should be doing something now. So we're past the phase where we have to convince them that that IoT or Industry 4.0 is is the next generation of technologies that they should be leveraging. So right. we're we're kind of past that that phase of having to actually uh, sell them on on why they should do this. Mm -hmm. Now it's more they're at the phase where okay, now what does this mean for my business? So I know I need to do this. What are the use cases I really want to target? What are the technologies that I need to to look at? So they're yeah. in more of that phase, I would say, is, is really where the market is now. Okay, fantastic. And when we're talking about an edge data platform, what does that exactly mean? And how, like, what, what does it exactly do? And what's the value there? Yeah, so in the, in the industrial world, you have uh, a lot of legacy systems. So a lot of machinery, a lot of PLCs, control systems, robotic systems that, that even have been out in the field for 40, 50 years at times. Once you make a, a capital expenditure, obviously, and in manufacturing, for example, this is something that you you try and get the most out of it for as many years. So it's not like mm. they're they're switching equipment or they're getting the most modern breed of equipment. And then they might have equipment coming from from many different vendors as well. Um, so they they don't all speak the same language. They don't all communicate. So that's that's really it's this massive heterogeneous ecosystem or siloed ecosystems of data that have been built up over the last 20, 30, 40 years. Um, so, so that's really the, the first challenge that they're even faced is, is how do I even make sense or get access to all this data in a, in a common, uh, homogeneous way. 
Mm. So an edge data platform really solves that from the, the first point is, is how you actually can take data in from all these sources and, and then really make it one common structure and format and more of a modern structure and format. So now it's ready to be actually um, consumed or, or leveraged by, by analytics applications. So, so that's the, the first step is, is how you can connect across all these different systems. The next step is then once you have this data, what you, what can you actually do with it? And again, mm -hmm. this is all edge first. So this is all looking from the perspective of inside of the, the factory or local at that, that site. Right. Um, and why edge is important in, in the industrial world is, is yeah, it's, you should not be exposing your control systems to the internet in directly. Sure. So you need something in between that's, that's providing this this um this intermediary basically so that your your systems are not directly exposed to the internet because that's right. when complete factories and production can actually get get hacked or or, yep. or have some issues there so something that that sits between that can do all this this collection this anal analyzing of data and 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 then integrating it out so that then you can then do the next layer of, of analytics mm -hmm. or things that you want to do with that data and are, when you when you talk about the um, kind of the risks associated with it, are there certain industries that are, I guess, more susceptible to to those kinds of risks that would make them the kind of uh, the companies that you would say would, should be the early adopters of these types of platforms um, or the ones that kind of really help drive this this space forward because of how much of a need and how much value it provides for their type of industry over others. I, I think even there's there's definitely some industries that still will not adopt cloud and maybe will never adopt cloud at least not the public ones um like aerospace or 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 civil or um anything to do with kind of government related uh manufacturing as well so so those kind of areas are probably looking at edge only maybe even scenarios potentially never even cloud um, but otherwise I would say it's, they all have kind of the same common problems across manufacturing. They all have equipment, they all have processes. Yes. The processes might be different uh, versus one another, but they're all trying to solve similar use cases at the end of the day. How do I become more efficient? How do I, how do right. I, my, how do I get more output out of my machines? How do I get less scrap? How do I get more output? Those kind of things. So the use cases tend to be still the, the same or the same challenges, the high level challenges that they're trying to all solve. And, and can you dive a little bit into that? Kind of what are those, what are the, the main things companies in this space are trying to solve and, and what are the leading use cases when it comes to an edge data platform? Yeah, so the the first things that they're, they're trying to solve are really around the the data visibility and, and, and machine visibility. So what's the current state of my, of my equipment? What's the current state of my assets? There's, Generally, a few KPIs that they're, look, they're looking at, like uptime, downtime, throughput, um, OEE, which kind of looks at a lot of these together in one. So trying to benchmark and look at OEE, what's my OEE now across all of my factories so they can start looking at where it's, it's um, they're falling short potentially in some of their, their facilities. So that's, that's really one of the first challenge that people are trying to do is really around machine visibility, condition monitoring, um, operational visibility, mm -hmm. and then moving to more advanced use cases like predictive analytics, predict around things like predictive maintenance, predictive quality use cases, um, remote monitoring, remote configuration, remote maintenance of, of assets as well. So those are, I'd say some of the, the more advanced use cases yep. and, and yeah, so edge plays a role in these. I'm not saying it's the only the only thing that can, can kind of solve all of these or tackle all of these, but it's, it, it plays a role in each one of these, these use cases. Fantastic. And if I'm out there listening to this and trying to understand to bring in an edge data platform into my business, there are obviously things that really drive that decision-making process for, for the edge in general. What are some of the key drivers that you see for edge to be something that companies need to be, um, looking at platforms like this. I know um, you mentioned the risk category of not having their machinery and processes connected to the internet, which is a, a clear one there. But are there other drivers for edge within these organizations that's, that's worth noting? Uh, yeah, I'd say looking at, at open and, and flexibility for, mm -hmm. for a system. So not 
when you're looking at edge, don't make this another vendor lock solution. Um, so providing just trying to purchase something from one vendor that's now going to lock you into their entire ecosystem where really the, the value of edge is, is now opening up this, this environment that's been completely heterogeneous for so many years, but now is giving you access to a world where you have infinite possibilities of what you can do with that data. So if yeah. you buy another vendor lock solution, you're not really solving that same problem. We right. have so many different solutions nowadays, which can solve so many different problems, so many applications that are out there. And if you're closing yourself off to those, then you're 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 setting yourself back again. Um, so so something that works with 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 open environments, something that can work across multiple vendors, both on the obviously how you collect data, but then also where you're you're utilizing that data as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say as well, looking at modern modern deployment mechanisms. So I think big topics now in, in the industrial world, things like Kubernetes is, is becoming um, quite more mainstream as well. Uh, being able to, to manage or run containerized apps at the edge, uh, not just making another Windows system or Windows desktop application, which you're installing, and then it becomes another unmanaged and, and security risk as well. So right. there's a lot of considerations as well. And, as well in terms of how you're deploying at the edge, mm. which companies I think should also consider more the next generation of, of technologies without kind of still being stuck sure. in the same older older ecosystems. Yeah, and, and what are some of the challenges when it comes to the deployment of, of edge solutions, edge data platforms, et cetera? Like when it comes to working on the edge, what are some of the big challenges that you've come across or that is important for people to kind of make note of and understand um, when they start considering solutions? Well, yeah. So I think the um, those mechanism deployment mechanisms that I just mentioned, yeah. people having counterparts within these companies that actually understand those kind of technologies is is sometimes few and far between. Uh, so making sure that they they invest in in the next breed of engineers that that are familiar with with these kind of technologies like like Kubernetes and and Docker and those kind of things are Linux based systems. Um, and then people that obviously are, are familiar on the data scientist side know what they can do once they actually have the data as well. Mm -hmm. I think people are, are extremely important when it comes to those things. Okay. Um, so I think those are kind of two of the, the main highlights I would say. Fantastic. For um, our audience out there that's watching this, uh, what are the, the key kind of personas or uh, individuals within an organization that are the ones that focus the most around deciding if this kind of technology and solution is is the right fit within within the business. What so just to kind of allow our audience to kind of hone in on who those decision makers usually are, who those buyers are, what does that persona like usually look like? Yeah, so titles can be different in in each of these companies. Um, so it really it really depends in terms of the okay. actual title themselves. But the actual roles uh, or personas are people that um, people that are overseeing basically enterprise data or architecting what they want to do in regards to data across the the organization. Sure. So sometimes that's driven through IT. Uh, we're seeing um, the most successful ones, I think, are operation are cross functional teams that have both knowledge of OT and IT. So mm -hmm. it could be, let's say, somebody that's been with their organization for 20, 30 years that knows inside and out each one of their factories. So what, what's actually there um, and knows what the, these pain points are. So there's, there's those, those kind of teams, but really they sit at, at the intersection of OT and IT and innovation okay. uh, around what, what they want to do with data. So there's even digital innovation teams, digital transformation teams, right, industry right, 4.0 right. teams we've seen. So those are really, um, really, really the ones that we've seen that they actually have these teams in place that are tasked with with doing this. There may be they're definitely the, the key influencers. Um, they're maybe not going to be the users in the end of the technology, but they're going to be the ones that drive the awareness across the factories, why they need to be doing this, why they why they need to invest in in edge or IOT. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we've seen companies be the most successful is when they have these kind of teams in place. Fantastic. And last question I have for you before I, I let you go here is for what advice do you have for companies out there looking to adopt an edge data platform? And at the same time, what should they what kind of things should they be prepared for be thinking about 
kind of in that um, in the early stages of their process, just around adoption challenges they may face and, and so forth. Um, but just, I guess, high level of how they can go about it and what advice you have for them to kind of move forward with, with something like this and making sure that's the right fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Flexibility is the number one thing to, to keep in mind. Um, so try and think more beyond than just trying to solve your one initial challenge, but something that can, can really set you up for success for the next three or five years or into the future. Um, and, and not just, not just create another bandaid solution. Mm -hmm. So you need to really think beyond that. We've seen people make poor decisions because they're trying to save money on, on, for example, a hardware for that one year, but then in three years, it's not going to be suit the need for what they want to do with that use case. So then they have to again, invest in new hardware, but if yeah. they just that proper investment, for example, originally, then they would have avoided having to do this twice or three times. Um, so those kind of things really keeping in mind, trying to set yourself up for success uh, along in, in the future and the more elegant and simplified you can, you can make your architecture with the least amount of vendors, um, then the more success you'll have, I think over, over time. So something that really works well across, across these multiple areas. Awesome. Well, well, I really appreciate you taking the time to um, to chat with us today, John. What I, one thing I would like you to do before we sign off here is is for our audience out there who's listening to this and wants to learn more about Litmus, what you all do, the role you you play about edge data platforms in general. What's the best way that they can kind of follow up, touch base, and um, um, kind of engage from there? Yeah, feel free to to reach out to me on on LinkedIn as well. Uh, happy to connect. Um, you can always. Come to our website at litmus.io and, and learn more and, and um, connect with our teams there through some of our, our forms and, and messages as well. Um, so there's, there's definitely a number of ways around social media. We're happy to, to connect and, and explain more about what we're doing in, the, in this space. Fantastic. Well, John, thanks again for your time. Really appreciate it. And I'm uh, excited to get this out to our audience. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Really appreciate the time as well. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the Ask IoT video series. I hope you found a lot of value in it. If you did, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps others find it and make sure that you get the latest episodes as soon as they come available. Other than that, if you have any questions or topics that you would like us to cover in this series, please leave them in the comments or shoot us an email at hello at iotforall.com. Other than that, thanks again for listening and we'll see you next time.